Hey guys, Bruce here with Shed Straps. Today is a big day. Um, I'm a fifth generation Montanan. I grew up here, but my dad didn't hunt. I didn't grow up hunting, but I'd really like to get into it. I'd like to get an elk or a deer. So I've gotten two tags, general season elk, general season deer here in Montana. And I'm gonna try to go out and get one of those things. I'm gonna share my story and document it and just see how hard it is for your average person to get into hunting and actually be successful. So today we have a gun, which is loaned from a friend. Thank you very much, friend, for this, uh, for the loan of the gun. We are making sure it's dialed in and I'm comfortable with it. It's a seven millimeter uh, 08 shell casing. And uh, we're, we already shot at 200 yards. The groupings were really, really tight. I was really happy with it. We're gonna try 300 and about 25 to 50 yards. And then we're gonna try 100 and we're gonna see what those are like. All right guys, so I had a lot of outdoor gear already. So I haven't had a huge pioneering cost going into this whole hunting thing. But here's what I have had to get. I bought game bags, these ultra lightweight um, Wapiti game bags. I bought ammunition, which is incredibly expensive. I bought a knife for processing because none of my current knives would do the job very well. I did have to buy some orange vests, one for me and one for my hunting buddy. And uh, that's about it. That's about all I've had to buy. But this is, uh, oh, the other thing that I had to buy was a chest freezer because there's no way our fridge freezer is fitting an elk or a deer. And then I also had to buy two coolers, one 170 quart cooler and one about 50 quart cooler. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely not a cheap affair going hunting, but I really consider it just a privilege to be out there and harvest your own animal. So that's why I'm doing this, not necessarily to save a bunch of money. All right, guys, it's opening morning, October 22nd. Got my lovely wife, Maddie. Um, we went into a pretty remote location. First light is in about 30 minutes. So we're gonna start creeping our way up a hill and just see if we see anything. I'm headed out for the second hunt of the year. I'm gonna give this place another shot because it was so clouded in last time that I just wanna see if there's anything in here. All right, we're coming up to a high point here, about a mile two and a half, and uh, it's gorgeous outside. I haven't seen a thing though. Hey guys, good morning. It is uh, day three of hunting for me. First two days was the same spot. Third day, we're trying a different spot with my buddy Cade here. Uh, we went up, glassed on a, on a ridge kind of knob, and we actually saw an elk in the next drainage. So we're bombing down kind of a north facing slope here, kind of go up and see if we can connect a shot. guys so we've probably spent three and a half four hours right here i'm um, just waiting for elk to kind of like feed out on some of these hills right here my buddy Cade is right there but as you can see the sun is going down so i think i'm gonna go check some tree lines really quick and start slowly making my way back we've got a long ways to get out of here so
All right, guys, it is hunt number four, November 5th. Got up early, got to the parking lot, and there were a bunch of other hunters here um, or in the parking lot. So this is gonna be really interesting to see how today shakes out. All right, guys, this is the fifth hunt of the year. Just got this forerunner stuck. The road is incredibly snowy. So we're gonna hike up to this first glassing point and see what we see. Dude, look at him. We spent a, a cold night in the car in a sleeping bag and we are up at the crack of dawn it is currently about seven o'clock and uh, we are going to have the same exact plan as the first day hike into the spot hope a polaris isn't there maybe we can get on those bulls Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, it is our sixth hunt of the year. It's November 23rd. Uh, the season has gone by so quick, almost evaporated. Um, and yeah, just have a few more days to really get this done. I got to the trailhead this morning uh, to hunt and there were about three other trucks in this one drainage that I wanted to hunt. I chose this spot because of mule deer. I think there could be quite a few awesome mule deer in here and apparently everyone else had the same exact idea. So I just kind of let them go their own way and uh, I went up on a separate ridge and kind of glass across the valley where people weren't headed and I've got a, a female mule deer kind of glassed up here. So a few moments later, it started snowing, just dumping, and we probably lost visibility out to about 250 yards. So I'm just gonna kind of wait in the trees until this calms down. <laughs> Doesn't look like this is gonna let up for a while. I either could burn some time with a fire or head back to the car. So we built ourselves a little fire. We're just gonna entertain ourselves for a little bit. Well guys, I think uh, I think hunt number six is a bust. I just, I cannot see anything. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Oh, oh, there's a deer. Okay, as I was filming that, I see two deer. One's a, one is a buck, a legal buck. He's going into the trees. Holy crap. I think he was a three point and he was falling a, a doe. I think 
that was the dough. I just screwed up. The buck was right. He was right there. I could have totally got him. Uh, I was just going too fast through these trees. Shoot. Guys, I can't even hike up. I mean, I'm sliding down the mountain. This guy saw me. He made a really weird gurgling noise. Like, ah. Uh, and then just bolted. All right guys, so this buck led me up onto this ridge and the snow is falling so hard, his track is just disappearing. So I think that's where we have to call it. It's so funny that that happened as I was filming my last outro of, yeah, it's snowing, I can't see anything. And then exactly at the edge of my range, I see a doe and a buck. I, I was shocked. Classic. Hey, what's going on guys? It is hunt number seven. It is currently November 25th. November 25th. Um, I'm in the same spot as hunt number six, just still going after mule deer. I've got one spotted up here across a huge canyon and I've got one probably 500 yards away. I haven't seen any bucks on them yet, but I'm hoping that'll happen soon. <laughs> All right, so I have a fork, a legal buck at 150 yards. And I don't think I'm gonna take the shot. I mean, my gun's all set up. I, I could totally take this and get my first deer, but he's with a bunch of, <laughs> he's still with his mom, you know? Maybe I'll forget that. It would have been nice to have that meat. Well guys, um. It's done. I uh, I passed on that two point. I just didn't want to shoot it. I, I zolioed my wife and I was like, should I take the two point? It's legal. And she's like, yeah, take it. And by that point, the moment had already passed. So I dumped my pack. I, I ran up the ridge and I was, I was trying to find that two point again and I couldn't find it. I was searching that side of the ridge and like, well, what's going on? They must be on the other side of the ridge. So it's really deep snow up here. I go back up over the ridge and uh, there's a beautiful three point <laughs> standing probably 200 yards away. So I put run round in and I think I hit the first shot and he went down. So um, I'm kind of in shock. Ears are ringing, adrenaline is up. I, I just took a life, but this life is going to sustain me and my wife and those who love and support us. So yeah, it's a, it's a really sad thing, but it's really beautiful as well. So that's that. I got him and then let's just follow this blood trail. Oh boy, not much tracking required here.
that's almost unreal. Hey, buddy. It's my first Montana, or my first, my first deer ever. I don't know what to say. Feels pretty unreal. I'm 90% positive this is the three point I saw two days ago. I'll rut it up chasing those uh, females around. Uh, it's real. Um, thanks buddy, really appreciate that. First shot right there and then there's the second shot oh yeah there's that two point I passed on he's literally right there hey guys it's now two o'clock I dragged the deer down from those cliffs all the way up there and uh, now I'm butchering it. Guys, I'm guessing this is going to be about a three mile pack out. Um, I've got everything carved up. Um, I don't think I'm going to take it all out in one load. I think it's just too heavy for me, especially with this backpack. It's a detour. It's not a hunting backpack. Um, but. It's carrying meat nonetheless. The first load, I gutted the animal right where I killed it. I then dragged it down probably a thousand feet and skinned it, left the carcass there. And then I moved all my bags probably 300 yards and just hung them. I've only got one bag left actually. So hopefully I can come back for that in the head. We let that meat sit overnight. In, uh, in some bags, that in the skull. So we're just hiking back up to get it now. We got a set. We got both hind quarters right there. So now we begin the process of the last trip out. Crazy, huh? Isn't that snow crazy? What's in the spot? All right, so we're probably in the last mile of this pack out here. I'm just really happy we're gonna be able to get all the meat out and that everything went according to plan. Uh, that's probably a wrap on the 2022 season for me. Um, ended on a really good note, but you know, even if I wouldn't have gotten anything, hunting was so much fun. Just seeing the elk and just all the animals that we saw this season and just being outside for six, seven, eight days over the past month and a half has just been a, an absolute pleasure. So um, we're definitely going to do this again next year. And uh, yeah, I mean, pretty soon the moose are going to start losing their antlers. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep some tabs on them. So I'll see you guys then.